And just a reminder that we are live on Facebook. So if you're joining us on Facebook, um, we're glad to have you. Um, I will tell you that, um, that because of this platform, I have been looking, it doesn't look to be that I'm gonna be able to, um, to, to curate comments on that platform. Um, I'll do my best. You're welcome to comment there. Um, if you are joining um, on, the, on the Zoom um, platform, if you look at the very bottom of your screen, there is a chat feature in the center. It looks like a little talk button. If you have a question or a comment, feel free to type it. When you, when you tap on that, um, a little message uh, box will pop up and you can type in your message and enter it. And I'll be curating questions and comments to share with Jenna. Appreciate you all um, who are joining us, um, muting your microphones. And again, if you've just recently joined us, I encourage you to select the speaker view versus the gallery view, which is the toggle in the upper right-hand corner. That'll give you the best um, insight, you know, be able to see all the ingredients and, and Jenna at work and showing her, um, her great cooking techniques. So I have 403, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm just gonna say thank you all for joining us. My name is Ann Self. I'm, if I haven't met you, I'm the executive director of the Village Green. We are the 13 acre privately conserved park for public enjoyment in the heart of Cashers. And usually we, in addition to uh, making this beautiful green space available for individuals to use for dog walking and children and families coming to play, we also have a series of program events. And we're excited that this summer we're gonna add Jenna to the, to the slate of our program events with um, a cooking class option that we're calling Uncomplicated Cuisine. And so we hope that this program this afternoon is a great virtual option, um, entertainment for you to enjoy, learning how to cook, and that you'll wanna sign up and, and cook with us this summer once you get a taste of what this is like. Um, Jenna is um, the um, executive director of the Uncomplicated Kitchen, which is a 501c3 nonprofit that um, seeks not only to spread the message of healthy cooking and, and how to use what's in your pantry and, and simple staples and fresh delicious ingredients to bring an easy meal to your table, but also to address food insecurity, recognizing that, um, that Food security is much more than having access to food, but knowing how to prepare it in a healthy way. And so that's her mission, her passion. Um, she is the former food business owner of Happy Go Lucky Foods, which I was the recipient many times of her de delicious granolas. And so I have actually, even though I can't reach to the screen and sample, I know that what she's gonna make is gonna be really tasty for us this afternoon. So I'm gonna turn it over to her now. And again, I just remind you that if you, um, if you use that chat feature in the bottom center in the talk bu bubble and um, ask your questions, um, make your comments, I'll make sure to pass them along to Jenna. And if you are joining us on Facebook Live, I will do my best to curate comments there as well. Um, but we're glad you're with us. And so Jenna, take it away. My last sip of water before we get going. So thank you everybody for joining us. I'm so excited to see so many people that I know and excited to see people that I don't. Um, today, as you may have heard, we're gonna make delicious lettuce wraps. I really like lettuce wraps because A, it's a great way to get a ton of veggies into your diet, especially in the spring when you know greens are coming up and carrots and all those delicious things. But it's really versatile because you can do, for vegetarians, you can do tofu. For pescatarians, you could do shrimp. Um, today we're doing chicken, but people could even do beef lettuce wraps. Um, there, you know, it can run the gamut of anything that you can put in it, from the proteins to the veggies to the toppings. And today we're gonna do the basic ginger soy marinade that I think works with anything you could put inside the lettuce wrap, any protein it'll work for. We're also gonna make my favorite quick sesame pickles. These are so fast and Asian inspired, a little bit of soy, a little bit of spice, a little bit of sweet, they're awesome. And then we're gonna do a spicy peanut sauce. Um, if you guys have a food processor, it'll be your best friend in this. Um, if not, you can get at it with a whisk and a bowl. So I guess we're gonna go ahead and start. Um, for anyone cooking along with me, I've already got my chicken chopped up, um, and we're going to build the marinade right in this dish because uncomplicated to me is also all about doing less dishes. It may not look it here because I don't want to, you know, do a ton of prep while y'all are watching, 
but for me, it's conserving dishes. So we've got about a pound of chicken cut up. It's just chicken breast. You can use whatever you have. To that, we're gonna go ahead and add our soy sauce. And I do extra marinade because at the end, I really like to bring it up to a safe temperature, simmer it down, and then your marinade, which had raw chicken in it before in this case, then can become a sauce. So you're not wasting it if we have a ton extra. So the soy sauce is going in. We're gonna do our neutral oil. I'm using um, just organic canola oil, but you guys can use whatever you like. I just don't recommend anything strongly flavored. Like extra virgin olive oil has got a really strong flavor. Sesame oil in moderation is great, but in this much quantity, a quarter cup, it's a lot. So just something neutral and plain. Then we're gonna do our rice wine vinegar. And let me know if anybody at home needs measurements and I can call those out to you but it's also in the recipe that you guys have received. So then we're gonna do fresh ginger. I minced this. If you don't have fresh ginger, I think you can absolutely do some ground powder ginger. I don't think that would be bad at all. Just make sure you really whisk it in well because you want all those clumps to dissolve if you are using the dry. And then I love garlic. A ton of fresh garlic goes in this. Again, so that's minced fresh garlic. If you don't have fresh garlic, the powdered stuff or the granulated will be fine. And then finally, because I think when you have salt and you have some acid and you've got some heat, you also need some sweet. And so in our marinade, it's delicious local honey, you guys. It's allergy season, get all of your local honey. Okay, there we go. So, looks like. Did I hear a question? All right. It's interesting. I'm doing this for my laptop. We have no camera person. We have my laptop propped up on a stack of books. So there. We're just whisking that together. There you go. Make sure your honey is dissolved. And then we're just going to set it aside. Because my chicken was cold, I'm just going to keep it out. I don't add, I like to add temp uh, meat that has come up a little bit in temperature before adding it to a pan. So this will be totally fine. So we're going to set it aside. While that's marinating, we're going to get started on our pickles because that also has a bit of a marinating time. So in your favorite bowl, you can do about a pound of cucumbers. I use these little Persian cucumbers. You can see how thin they are and that they don't have many seeds inside. They're really tiny and you don't peel them. You just throw them right in. And for the carrots, this recipe says that you can julienne them or you can do coins. I opted for easy coins today. Just really thinly sliced, as comfortable as you, you know, are getting, you know, to doing thin, do that. Add those in. Again, I get organic carrots, so I don't peel them. The peel is where a lot of that goodness is anyway, so if you want to keep the peels, makes your job easier, and it's a lot of health benefits in there. And then green onions. We all like these green onions, right? They're delicious. They're mild. About three of those in there. Just cut in little discs. And then that's it for our veggies. If you guys have bell pepper or anything else that you want to add to this, you can add anything you want, honestly. Like, I think last night I threw in, oh, I had some radishes. I added those in when I was practicing the recipe. It's pretty much all fair game. Just like no tomato, I wouldn't add that. I don't think it would work well. But here we go. We're gonna add our rice wine vinegar. A little bit of that same neutral oil. In this, because you're only using a little bit of oil, if you wanted to go with sesame oil, I think it would be totally fine. Then we have a little bit of soy sauce. For people watching their sodium, you could use like coconut amino acids. If you're gluten-free, you could use tamari. There's a lot of good soy sauce substitutes out there, and ultimately you could leave it out if you chose. That would be fine too. It just gives it a little bit of salt, and since we're doing Asian food, soy sauce works nicely. So we're just mixing that up. And here, as you can see, I've got some sesame seeds and chili flakes. We're adding that in. And then once again, honey. And for people who are completely plant-based, 
You can do agave in this. Maple syrup would be fine. Any sweetener. In a pinch, you could use a pinch of sugar. It would be totally great. I have done that. But again, if you're using honey or something really viscous like this, you need to make sure it's dissolving. Because as you can see, it's getting stuck to my spatula. So we're just going to get in there and we're going to work it through. And it looks like, as you can probably see, there's not a ton of liquid in this. Can y'all see that? Shake heads if you can kind of see. There's not a ton of liquid in this, but the salt will draw moisture out of your cucumbers. So in a half hour from now, this will be really, really saucy. Looks at this point can be very deceiving. So doesn't look like a lot of juice now, but believe me, by the time you're ready to eat it, you'll have plenty. And I like to drizzle that acidic, delicious sauce over my lettuce wraps. So rest assured, there will be enough. Okay, so we're just gonna do that. I'm dropping carrots and onions everywhere. And we're just gonna set this aside. So we've got our chicken marinating. We've got our pickles pickling. And now we're going to do the peanut sauce. So some people don't do peanuts and I fully understand that. You can use an almond butter in this. You can use cashew butter. I think that mostly any nut or seed butter could work in this, even tahini. I have used so much tahini in my day and I've had so much leftover tahini and I know that it's good for just about anything that peanut butter is uh, good for. So we're gonna start with about a cup of that and in your food processor or in your mixing bowl, we're gonna do gloppy peanut butter. Now, if you want to use chunky peanut butter, that's fine. I'm in the minority in my family, and I like creamy peanut butter. Um, just make sure that it's not one of those ones with chocolate in it or cinnamon or any of that. Just a simple peanut butter, salted, unsalted, it doesn't matter. It'll all be great. So there we go, peanut butter in the work bowl. We have got, again, ginger. Minced fresh ginger. Going in the bowl. We've got, once again, soy sauce. Feel free to substitute tamari or amino acids, whatever you like. There we go. Rice wine vinegar for a little acidity. You could also, if you have it on hand, some fresh limes, make some lime juice and uh, throw that in. We've done that plenty of times and it's really great, especially if you're doing shrimp lettuce wraps, I really like the lime. And then if it's an organic lime, you could use the zest and throw that in there as well. That gives you a bunch of extra flavor. But rice wine vinegar is what I have and we're all about making do, so that's what we're doing. And then um, I'm using like sriracha hot sauce. I think it's the best for Asian food. But if you have just like a regular chili paste or like a Korean hot sauce, you can use that too. And if you don't like spice, leave it out. It's not that big of a deal. And then once again, gloopy, gloppy honey. I love this stuff. Actually, this honey was a gift from my friend. It's local honey that she infused chili peppers into. So it's extra spicy. And I'm gonna get all that goodness out and put that in the work bowl. Okay, so there we are. Easy peasy. Not really, I'm kind of making a mess, but that's fine. So I've got a stack of dishes and a full bowl. So we're gonna add the lid back onto your food processor and you're just gonna pulse at first to see kind of if you have a major glop. Because if you get like freshly ground peanut butter, it's gonna glop up pretty good in here. So we just wanna go slow. And you want to see kind of that, you want to see that it's, there's no giant clumps anywhere. It's just becoming a sauce. Let's hope I get this back on. I think we did it. And then we're going to continue to pulse. And we're just looking for this to be a really creamy consistency. There's no magic here other than me saving my arm from whisking. So as you can see, this is not a peanut sauce. This is, can you see that? It's really thick and pasty. So I don't want that. We want a sauce, we want a spoonable sauce. 
This right now is straight peanut butter. So a little bit at a time. I do between a teaspoon and a tablespoon at a time, just a little bit. And you're gonna pulse again. It's still really thick, but getting better. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water. And I'm gonna keep doing this until it's at a consistency that I like. So I'll that go. And you can tell by the shaking of the food processor that it's not smooth enough yet. So here we go. We're still really tasty, honestly. So I think we can add a bunch more water. I reserved, I put a cup of water in this measuring cup. We might need the whole thing. I don't know. We'll see. And at some point, it's a good idea to scrape down the sides. So let me grab my peanut butter. Ah, that's starting to look great. I'm going to show you this. Okay, so we're almost there. Can you see now it's kind of, um, it's a bit creamier looking. It's lighter in color. It's lighter in color because air is being whipped into it by the food processor. But it is getting smoother and spoonable. Also, if you guys thin this out a lot, this is an awesome peanut salad dressing. So if you guys like those like Asian peanut bowls at Panera or whatever, this is pretty much what you get as dressing. So, this is very multi-purpose. Get this back on. Watch me struggle. There we go. I think we're just about there. All right. Again. Yes, this is great. See now, that is much thinner. Trying to get you guys to see this, my fancy technology. See, that's a bit thinner. I think just a little bit more water and we're gonna be all set. Don't be shy, go ahead and add it in, it's fine. There you go. Now, it is not shaking anymore, so it's happily blending away. Okay. We're good. Okay. And we are just going to get this out into a bowl so we can use it later. All right, and now you'll be able to see what this looks like. If you do use a food processor, make sure you take the blade out before you start digging around in there. I may or may not have made that mistake before. So, Jenna, is it possible to make that in a blender like a Vitamix and, oh, yeah. and pour the water in through the opening to get the consistency that you For want? Sure. Do the same exact process in a Vitamix or in one of those little ninja bullets, I'm sure would be fine too. Oh, look how good that looks. See, that's just like, it's nice and smooth and delicious now. So we're just going to put that in our bowl. This made a ton. So here we go, we've got our peanut sauce. Now, and that's great, and that's ready to go, so you have to do nothing else to it. If you put it in the fridge, it will congeal a lot, so it depends on how far in advance you're going to be doing this. If you're making peanut sauce, like right before you serve it, just leave it out. I, um, it's, you know, it'll congeal a bit too much before you are ready to use. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean all the peanut butter off my hands. Oh, look at this, check this out, our pickles, there is already a ton more liquid in the bottom. So they are doing their thing. And you can store these in the fridge, but you know, I'm just gonna keep them out for entertainment purposes. Okay, so those are doing great. Now we've got our chicken and our chicken is marinating. When it's small pieces of chicken like this, there's a lot more surface area going on than just like a big chicken breast. So if you want the flavor to seep in to your protein, uh, the smaller it's chopped up, the more your marinade will get in there. It doesn't matter, chicken, fish, beef, whatever the case is, the smaller it's chopped, the less time you probably need to marinate. So at this point, it's only been, what, 20 minutes? I think we're gonna be absolutely fine to go ahead and start cooking this. Now, Here's some advice from somebody who has uh, done this the wrong way before. If you decide to turn on your pan 
and you put your little bit of oil in it and you decide to just throw all of this chicken with the marinade in here the mess is like besides the point but you're just gonna you're so moisture is the enemy of browning and caramelization so if we want good caramelized delicious chicken we don't need this liquid in this pan so i don't have a sink right here what i'm gonna do is talk you through it but we're gonna strain this out but we're also going to try to reserve our liquid for making a sauce after we're done. So bear with me. What we're going to do is strain. All right. I've got this. I've got a bowl to catch the reserved liquid. Actually, I think we can do it. Here we go. If anyone is warning me silently about doing this, <laughs> it's too late. Okay. So I've got a little strainer. And we're just gonna spoon this into the strainer. Look at that. No messes. Okay, let me get that in So we just want as much of this liquid off as possible. Can you guys see what I'm trying to do? If you have a big colander, that'll work fine. Anything that lets the liquid through with a reserve, you know, little vessel to catch them. Put it up there. Okay, so a lot of that liquid is out. Give it a shake, shake, shake. Help gravity, stir it around a little bit. And it's nice because we still have all those chunks of ginger and garlic in there. That's gonna be delicious in the end product. So shake, shake, shake. There we go. And even further, I would really like to drain this for a second on a paper towel and pat it dry because I really want crispy chicken. It's delicious. So go the extra mile. It'll cost you one paper towel in two seconds. Okay, there we go. So on our plate, with just the paper towel, we're just gonna spread this out. And at home, you don't have to hold your plate up in the air like I am right now. Do not try this at home. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then take another paper towel. And so you don't get chicken hands, use your fork and just pat around. Want to keep the chicken on the plate. There we go. So we are dry-ish. Okay, so we've got our sauce reserved. Now this is not safe to eat right now because raw chicken just lived in this. We have to cook this just as if we were cooking any raw beef or poultry, anything. This has to come up to a safe temperature. So this is not sauce yet. This is still just a used marinade that needs a lot of work. But we're not wasting it. You work too hard for your money. Don't throw it in the garbage. So I have my fancy burner here. And at home, medium, medium high is great. You know how your burner works. If things are too hot, tone it down a bit. But we're preheating this right now. Can you guys still hear me over the hum of the induction burner? Cool. So, neutral oil going in. Just a little bit. You just want to coat the bottom to prevent your chicken or fish or whatever it is from sticking. So, okay. We're going to wait till that heats up. You guys can tell when your pan is heated up because you can see the oil start to dance a little bit. My mom and like grandparents used to do things like throw water in a pan, but there is hot oil in this pan. Don't throw hot oil in this pan. Oil and water fight and one of them jumps out at you and we don't need that. So, all right. It's starting to shimmer, it's glistening a little bit. It's starting to move around the pan on its own. While you're waiting for the pan to heat up, Jenna, just to remind everybody that you've used the chat feature in the bottom. If you have questions or comments, I'll be sure to post those to, to Jenna yeah. as we go. Ask questions. I'm happy to answer all the things. Okay, I'm gonna pat this for another second. This is, I think, hot enough. So we're just gonna discard our chicken and paper towel. And right from this plate, Actually gonna check. Ah, sizzle, great. Okay, so 
So we're just gonna, look, we're really cooking. Go scrape your paper towel into the pan. If you do, not that big a deal. Spread this out. Spread your chicken out. You want a single layer. Okay, so. It's gonna yell at me every time I pick it up. But do you see it cooking away in there? Great. So the key to getting good browning on your food and caramelization is to let it do its thing. Don't keep stirring this around. Let it make contact with the heat. Let that Maillard reaction is what it's called when you get browning and caramelization of your food. That's when the sugars really come to life and make your food really, really tasty. So notice I'm not messing with it. I got it in a single layer and I'm not doing anything else. For me, there's a trick to knowing when it's time to start flipping and messing with your food in the pan. You know when you're cooking chicken or fish or whatever, you can kind of see it becoming opaque from the bottom up, right? All of a sudden it's like this translucent thing, but then from the bottom up, it starts looking like it's cooking. When it gets halfway to three quarters, that's my cue to flip. And so that's what we're gonna do now. So we're waiting, and this is, you know, small chopped chicken breast, so this isn't gonna take very long. So we're almost there. This is fast, I tell ya. You can get this meal on, if you have this peanut sauce made and hanging out in your fridge, and we do usually always have this in there, you can get dinner on the table in less than a half hour. And this is a great way to stretch proteins because the majority of this dish is vegetables. How we serve it in our house anyway, it's mostly all veggies. So a little bit goes a really long way. Oh my gosh, that looks good. Okay. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's happy and ready to flip. You see that? All right. That is brown delicious chicken. So we're going to just flip this around in the pan. Very exciting, it looks awesome. Just flip all of them over and let it sit again. And the other side will get all nice and brown. And honestly, I don't wanna cook this chicken until it's just done um, because I really want it to get crispy on the edges. And here's something I wanna tell you guys. When you use really, really good quality chicken, this chicken was donated from my friend Hayden. He is a poultry farmer here in Silva. And his chickens are not, um, when they're processed, they're not pumped full of a bunch of water and, you know, uh, flavor solutions before they get to you. So this does not cook down. It is so much juicier. And um, I think you get a lot more for your money when you get good quality chicken. So we can let this go a little longer. And we don't have to worry that it's going to shrink down to nothing. So, just a tip, Hayden at No Mountain Farm, thank you for donating this amazing chicken. We are about 75% there on this. We're just gonna let it keep going. Perfect. So, while this is happening, you can begin thinking about your lettuce wraps. So, we, for the sake of time, have already prepped our lettuce. So, we have amazing leaf lettuce. Has everyone heard of like butter lettuce or bib lettuce? Any of those really good soft, wide lettuces that all the restaurants know what's up and they use them for our lettuce wraps? That's what we have here. We have a butterhead lettuce and our lettuce was donated today by Old Roots Farm. Um, a guy named Barry, he offered to donate to our house today and thank you Barry. So we've already cleaned this. All I do to clean this lettuce is I set it down on my cutting board and I chop the, you know, the root end off. And I swish it around in a bowl of water and you can either put it in your salad spinner or dry it with a towel. And that's all you got here. We just got beautiful lettuce. This is our little vehicle to get all the delicious food in our mouth. Okay, so your lettuce prep, that doesn't take any time at all. You could chop some extra veggies that you have in your fridge. 
I really like some bell pepper with this. So last night when I was practicing this, we did some red and yellow bell pepper. Um, almonds, so good on top. I really, really love almonds. Toasted, not toasted, it doesn't matter. These are untoasted raw. And then everybody knows these guys, those delicious noodles that you get on your table when you get your soup. Yeah, these are awesome. I love those on top. And I really like avocado too. I think the creaminess complements this dish really, really well. Also, tell me this is the cutest avocado you've ever seen. Thank you, Trader Joe's and your teeny tiny avocados. So, okay, by the time I was done talking about this, our chicken is done. See how good that looks, you guys? That went from a little bit of chicken to a lot of delicious. And all that sugar is caramelized on here, that ginger, that garlic, that soy, oh my gosh, that honey. I am incredibly excited. Okay, so that's done. I'm just gonna put this on my stove so I'll burn myself. So that is done. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about building that sauce out of this. Now this is not meant to dress your whole entire dish because this is salty. This has a lot of soy in it. This has a lot of flavor. Use it sparingly, but this is an absolute fabulous little tiny drizzle for your lettuce wraps. But like I said, this is not safe to eat right now. So we need to make it safe to eat. So in just a little saucepan, see if this will work. It's so tiny on this little burner. Okay, we're gonna heat up the saucepan and we don't have to get this to any particular temperature right now because we just need this to cook. Throw it in while your pot is cold. It's totally fine. So there you go. We have to do nothing to this except for stir it around every couple seconds. Just kidding, not even every couple seconds. Maybe like, I don't know, 30 seconds a minute. If it's boiling over, we need to stir it. So we can set this aside. Then we can talk about prepping your veggies. So I already prepped a lot of things ahead of time for the sake of time in this class, like for the pickles and for the chicken. But I wanted to show you guys a couple of tricks in the meantime, because I know we've got time while our sauce is going. Oh, look at this, our pickles are very pickly now. There's a ton of juice in the bottom, as promised. So there you go, pickles are perfect. So does everyone, how does everyone peel ginger? Does anyone, raise your hands, I can't hear. Raise your hands if you go at it with a vegetable peeler. Anybody? Raise your hand. Okay, we've got one. Raise your hands if you do it with a knife. Okay. Raise your hands if you do it with a spoon. Yay! We have spoon people. Well, for y'all who are not spoon people, this is the coolest thing that I ever learned. Serious. So, all you do is you take your spoon and you just, you just get, here, I'm gonna like come right up here. I'm gonna drop it, here, look, look. Can we see that at all? Let's move the light. You need to see this, this is so great. Light don't fall. Okay, so, all you're doing is taking that in your hands and you are scraping your ginger. See that? Look at that. It peels right off, it's so easy. Very cool trick. Aren't you excited you learned that today? So, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna get this light not to fall. My camera crew took off for the day. So, this is starting to simmer, by the way, so we're cutting that, or we're just gonna stir that a little bit. Perfect. And then we're just gonna continue scraping this. So you scrape it all the way around, fast, fast, fast. The littler the spoon, the better. There you go. Um, also, something that I think is helpful to know is when a recipe calls for like a tablespoon of minced ginger, you need about an inch of ginger. 
It's like the only food that I really know of that's measured in like inches, but an inch of ginger is about a tablespoon. FYI. So there we go. Oh, our sauce is looking good. It's reducing. Great. So we have this. And then to mince it, all I do is I cut it in little rounds. I don't know how well you can see this. Can you see this? Cut it in little rounds. And then I cut it in little matchsticks. So I just stack them up and I just cut them in little matchsticks. And then I flip those matchsticks around. And I just go like that. And then just get my fingers. Just run your knife through it. Keep stacking it, pushing it. There you go. You have minced ginger. Great. Good inside. Now for garlic, does anyone think this is like a magic vault to get into? Like how do you do this? Does anyone try to peel this by hand? No, right? Does anyone smash it with a knife because it's really fun? Yay! That's what I do. This is great. All you do, if you don't smash it with a knife, there you go. The peel breaks, and there you go. Your peel is off. It's a super simple way to get your garlic out of its little home. There you go. Same way. And because you've already hit it pretty hard, it's halfway to being minced. So there you go. Minced garlic. And the only other thing that um, I think is helpful to maybe explain is these green onions. Some people think that like you can't use this green part and then I've heard other people say that they don't think you should use this white part. This whole thing is deliciously edible and I'm gonna show you something cool. So what I do is I just cut off about this much at the end. Not that this is bad, but because I like to do something really cool with it. So I'm gonna save that. And you just peel off any, this is already good to go. We're gonna let it go and then we're gonna check its temperature to make sure it's safe. So, Cut off the end just because it's a little bit ratty looking. And then you just cut it in little rings. This is what I meant when I said cut in little rings. Just like that. All the way through. And this is also a great garnish, so this won't be wasted. Okay. There you go. That is done. So this really quick side note. You guys can put it in water on your windowsill. And I have fresh onions for my eggs just about every day without having to reach into my fridge. That's pretty neat. It grows right out of the top again. So within a couple days, this nub will turn into this. And you can absolutely use this again. Just a little water in a little dish. And on your windowsill, super cool. Keep using those scallions. They're awesome. So I just keep it right here. It lives with my succulents. So there, this is why I don't use the end. It's totally fine to use the whole thing, but why not have free scallions? Okay, so our sauce has reduced significantly. Um, it's down to just a little bit, but that's great because all we need is a little drizzle. Safe temperature for chicken, everybody. Does anyone know what it is? 165 is what you're looking for with chicken, but if it's boiling, obviously it's higher than that. So I'm gonna fish around and get out my thermometer and I'm gonna check it. Because raw poultry is nothing to mess around with. So we just wanna make sure we're at a safe temperature. We're at 210. So we're definitely safe. So I'm just gonna shut that off and set that aside. Now we have a really nice drizzling sauce. Okay, so I think we should go ahead and compose a lettuce wrap. These chicken chunks, have cooled off. I, this is just personal preference, but I don't really prefer the chicken to be hot when I add it to cold lettuce. I'm one of those people in a restaurant, if chicken or fish comes on a salad, I want it on a separate plate. That's just me, if you want it warm, it's fine, but I like it to cool down a bunch. So, we're going to, on your beautiful platter that I know you all have at home, you're gonna get out, some of these. And this is really fun for everyone to do on their own at the table. I just usually, honestly, 
set out this giant board with all the toppings and the sauces and the chicken, and then we just go for it at the table. But for show purposes, we're gonna make one. So there you go. My husband taught me something great. Don't tell him I said so, but he thinks that it's really helpful if you put like your sour cream for a taco or whatever right on the tortilla, or in this case, our lettuce wrap. That way you're not getting all the other toppings on your spoon when you're trying to shake it off, right? So if all we've got is that, we're just gonna go ahead and a little bit right in there. A little bit of our peanut sauce. Then we're gonna do just a little bit of our chicken. So, just a couple little chunks, that's all you need. There you go, I got three and a half chunks of chicken. Then we're gonna do a little bit of our green onion. And you guys, like I said, you can put whatever you want on these. There you go. Then some noodles. I'm a, I'm a real glutton for toppings. So if there's a topping to be had, it's going on no matter how messy it ends up being. Case in point, here's what I'm about to do. Then our amazing pickles that we made. These look so great. And I really like the acidity on these lettuce wraps. So I'm gonna add some of those. This is not first date food, you guys. This is when you're really comfortable with everybody that you're eating with because it gets all over the place. I'm a messy eater, I know for a fact. So here you go. So we've got our peanut sauce, we've got our chicken, we've got our pickles that we just made. And if you guys like, you know, extra sriracha, you can do that as well. Um, some more fresh ginger, that's fine. Anything else that you like, like I said, I did bell peppers last night, pickled radishes, it's all fair game. So this is your lettuce wrap. I will not torture you by eating this on camera right now, but I will show you how to put my last favorite topping together. So this is a very cute avocado, but nonetheless, this is how I like to serve avocado at the table. As we all know, avocado browns really, really quickly unless you add some acid to it. But sometimes I don't want the taste of that in my avocado. I just want straight avocado. So we're gonna carefully get, carefully get our, our pit. There you go, thank you very much. Tiny avocado probably needs a smaller knife. What I do is I just drag my knife through the avocado, not breaking the skin. And then I just make another little grid. So there, and I do this on both sides. So we're just tracing little lines so we get a small dice. So Jenna, do you know if it's true or not? I've heard that if you have an extra uh, avocado that's not ripe, that's extra hard, that if you put it in a microwave for 10 seconds, it will, it will ripen. Is that true? Do you know, have you tried it? You know, I will try that because I'm notorious for buying underripe avocados. So I'll try it and report back and I don't know. That's very, I have not yet heard that. So I, I'm definitely actually gonna try that. So here's our little avocado. It's still in its little protective skin. And then what you're gonna do is you can give everybody their own little half of avocado at the table. You just put it face down on the platter. So you just put it face down. That way the air doesn't get to it and it doesn't brown as quickly. That's what we did last night. It worked great. So I don't want anything on this besides avocado. And the last thing I do is you just use your little spoon. Some people turn it inside out. Like I do that with mango, but not avocado. I just scoop it out of its little home and add it to this delicious lettuce wrap. And there you go. Pre-diced avocado no browning. So there you go, everybody. You have this delicious lettuce wrap. And like I said, if you want, you can, when this cools, it's too hot now, so I'm not gonna put it on it. But when the sauce cools, it's amazing to put on the table, a little spoon, and people can just drizzle a little bit extra of that sauce if they'd like. So there, there's your lettuce wrap. How's that look? Yay, delicious lettuce wraps, yay! All right, question time. Yeah, so. Fire away. Let me check over on Facebook Live to see if anybody's posted anything. I've explained things that well. That would be amazing. But should anyone have questions, let me know. Getting comments, wonderful show. Thank you very much. You're love, the, love the substitution options.
Not seeing anything. I did great. Ready for, ready for the next recipe. <laughs> hey, I don't know. Maybe somebody's throwing it in the gauntlet that wants to see you. Um, that wants to see you eat it. So <laughs> really, yeah. I will eat this. <laughs> Let's go, y'all. And I've got an apron on. I should probably eat with an apron most of the time. Oh, technique. All right, this is not. My dad last night tried to like wrap this up like a burrito. It was a mess. Use your hands and you just fold it in a little bit. Your hand is a cradle. Once you start, you cannot put it down, everybody. This is like burrito rules that my husband taught me. If you put the thing down, it's gonna dump all over the place. So you're committed once you start. Here we go. And while you're eating, I won't make you talk with food in your mouth. Um, <laughs> Jenny says the onion trick is amazing. I've been using the wrong end. So a good tip. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. It also occurred to me when you were laying everything out and putting everything together that this is a fun, you know, kid cooking opportunity. And, mm -hmm. and even at the table for, you know, if, if you've got a picky eater to be able to pick out what it is they want to put on their lettuce wrap, that this is a good option. And, um, I'm looking. I, I'm looking across the board. I'm not judging any age ages, but I know that there are some on here who have probably have grandchildren, and um, and I'm thinking already that my grand my grandsons are coming to visit next week. That that this might be a fun interactive cooking project for us to do and mm -hmm. kind of party festive atmosphere at the at the table. It is nice. It's like a choose your own adventure. Yeah, choose your own adventure is a great description. It also occurs to me that putting your toppings on a great big lazy susan like you use for charcuterie mm -hmm. would be a great way to serve at the table. Yeah, because I mean, I think we all like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And, oh my gosh, we can't go to salad bars anymore now. I'm heartbroken. This is like my chance to control everything that somebody <laughs> on the table, right? Like I definitely want more pickles than somebody else. So I like being able to to have this at the table for people, you know, if there's people who don't like X, Y, or Z, like some of your serving sandwiches, it's nice to have a board out. And if somebody doesn't like tomatoes, you don't have to worry. They don't have to have tomatoes. That's just fun. And I think it's nice to actually play with your food. I really like finger food. And I think this is a really nice way to do that very healthfully, you know, so I don't know. I'm in love with chicken wraps and now it's grilling season. So you can grill this chicken, keep the heat out of your house, fire up that grill, do little chicken on skewers, throw it out there, do some shrimp, you could grill tofu. I mean, there are endless amount of things that you can do with this dish. Um, yeah, I love it. I'm glad you guys joined me. That was really fun. Yeah, well, it was <laughs> great. And um, and just to, you know, to get, a, a, had a comment, great recipe, great presentation. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, we are, we will be offering these cooking classes and opportunities at the Village Green. Um, and I think our first one is in, in July. Yes. And we we're calling this Uncomplicated Cuisine. And so we will be, Jenna will be cooking and demonstrating picnic fare. And so lots of fresh salads and, and things that you can- We're doing fancy for. picnic. Yeah, yeah. We it's, are excited about it. It's gonna be fun. And, and um, we're gonna do it all the way through the end of the year. The Village Green has just finished completion of a new cultural events and community activities facility. Um, it's the Commons Hall and we'll be able to do it, you know, even when the weather gets chilly, we'll be cooking up something warm and yummy and delicious too. And so I'm excited for this collaboration. And, and we're doing the DIY holiday gifts. Yes, we are. The few gifts, we're gonna be doing infused syrups and custom tea blends. Yeah, it's going to be lots and lots of fun. So um, make sure um, I'm, I posted the comment in the in the chat. If you if you signed up for the Zoom link with Jenna and you want to get a link to the this recorded presentation and also copies of all her, these awesome recipes and her tips included in that, um, make sure to email me. My email address is director at cashersgreen.com. And if you're interested in being added to our e-news list um, to learn about other upcoming virtual offerings, make sure you let me know that too. And I'll make sure you get the next copy of our e-newsletter. 
So I'm not seeing any other questions. I'm just getting lots of, we loved your class, very informative and fun. It was awesome. And, and, if, people, and if people wanna check out what our organization does, um, the website is just uncomplicatedkitchen.org. And if somebody wants to email me, it's jenna at uncomplicatedkitchen.org. You can see the work that we do in the community, see who we partner with, and see what's coming up next. And we also have some cooking classes recorded on there as well. And I'll be sure and include a link to that website as well as Jenna's email and also my, my email in the, in the email that I send you following up. I'm, I'm also probably going to send a short survey because I want to get some feedback on these virtual um, offerings and see what other people are interested in. And so look for that email full of lots of good information about this presentation about Jenna and Uncomplicated Kitchen and um, the Uncomplicated Cuisine offerings at the Village Green later this summer. So, Yay. all right, excellent job, Jenna. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, everybody, Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye.